Radio Emo Breakfast. Joining us now to talk about the high-tech stories of the week, Paul Brislin from uh, twitter.com forward slash Paul Brislin, head of two ands as well. Paul, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very well, thanks. And uh, through the, um, the, the mysteries of the uh, ultra-fast New Zealand internet right now, <laughs> we, are t- <laughs> we are talking I'm to you. <laughs> I'll move. Maybe that'll upset it a bit more. Look. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's all kind of crazy, pixelated. But anyway, um, let's talk about let's talk about um, f- the future of broadband in yes. New Zealand. There was a conference this week called Future Broadband. Uh, what That's was right. what was the guts of it? So the Commerce Commission uh, put together this conference to discuss all the issues that might arise um, uh, that would stop people from moving to our shiny new ultra fast broadband network once that gets up and running. And uh, it was one of the more uh, interesting and uplifting um, uh, broadband conferences I've ever been to. Normally, they're full of people complaining about why haven't we got it and when's it coming and somebody else should build it and I don't want it and I don't want to pay for it and somebody else should pay for it. This was far more about what are you going to do with it once it gets here, which is uh, tremendous. It's bags of fun. And we had some really good discussions about all kinds of things. We had... um, uh, the, the technologies you'll need um, to, to run over this kind of thing, the kind of economic outputs that can come from it. We got into the whole debate around content as well, uh, around um, Sky TV and whether or not there is, in fact, a monopoly on content. Um, and Sky assures us that they have none of the uh, the um, the rights that uh, uh, are needed for this kind of thing. It's called SVOD, Subscriber Video On Demand Rights. Uh, and they simply don't have any of those rights for any of the material that everybody seems to think they do. Uh, so they're not holding up anybody else from um, uh, rolling out uh, service, huh. and so it's not their fault. Uh, and everybody else disagreed, <laughs> which uh, is quite an interesting um, idea, really. It's it's um, it's going to be uh, well, an interesting year ahead, I think. Well, what's your opinion on that? I mean, uh, you know, they say they don't have the rights, but surely yeah. they could get those rights if they wanted and probably would have first dibs on them. Well, uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would say they've probably got some kind of first dibs uh, uh, advantage. But um, uh, if they are right and they don't have any kind of control over the rights as they stand today, then uh, you've got to ask why somebody else isn't coming in and offering that. And the answer to that is probably that New Zealand is just quite small and quite far removed. And if you are going to be negotiating with uh, Warner Brothers and HBO and all the rest of them, mm. uh, you, you, sh- you need a bit of scale. So I imagine we're likely to see uh, a situation develop where um, Sky or somebody else aggregates all of the demand for New Zealand and goes out to these guys and says, OK, now we've got four million customers. Uh, that moves us up the food chain a little bit. Let's have a conversation about uh, uh, what we can do for New Zealand um, customers. Right. Um, so it, it's it's a tricky one. You know, I'd, I'd like to see a lot more of this happening sooner rather than later. But at the moment, uh, it's it's all a bit moot anyway because um, people are just going out and, and torrenting it. And there's a lovely cartoon doing the rounds of the Internet at the moment that compares the process for trying desperately to buy content online uh, and um, uh, being able to just go on out and steal it, which is uh, unfortunately the uh, the situation at the moment. Mm. A lot of talk and moaning about data caps in New Zealand at this conference. <laughs> Was the moaning loud enough for, for anyone to, to listen? And, and, and are we going to see data caps disappear in some form this year? Well, that, that is the big push, is that um, data caps, uh, as they stand in New Zealand, are a restriction on, on uptake. Uh, they're there for certain reasons, and, and a lot of them are historic. Uh, a lot of these reasons are um, to do with the way the network has been um, uh, set up over time and the way it's been um, uh, managed. Uh, and, and I've got a guest post from a certain blogger who we will put up later on today on the Two Hands website all about caps and how, how they work and why they work the way they do. Uh, but I would be uh, expecting to see the end of caps once we move to the ultra-fast broadband network. There's absolutely no need for us to be restricting data if we're buying um, a service based on speed. Mm. So the reason, one of the reasons we've got caps at the moment is that uh, the Commerce Commission made it quite clear to the ISP some time ago that uh, you can't advertise 10 megabits a second or 15 megabits a second in terms of speed unless you can guarantee you can provide that. And because of DSL, the technology we use, you, you can't 
guarantee that the customer will receive that speed. Right. So the ISPs have looked for another differentiator and they've gone out and they've decided that um, if you can't talk about speed, well, let's talk about data. And that's how you segment your, your market. So an entry level will have um, this much data, but if you pay more, you get even more data further up the food chain. So that's how they've done it. And uh, under the UFB, of course, we are selling things on price. It will be, um, you know, 30 down, 10 up, 50, 50, 100, 100, this kind of thing. So then there's no need for them to differentiate on data. And I would hope that they take the opportunity to move away from it. Internationally, we're one of the very few countries that have uh, predominantly data capped plans. Uh, there are four that uh, have nothing but data capped plans and, uh, and are slowly moving to an uncapped world. Most of the rest are uncapped and are slowly introducing caps. Yeah. They're very, very high. You know, so so for the money I spend in New Zealand and get 120 um, gig of data, yeah. uh, I could save money. I could save about forty dollars a month uh, and get uh, one terabyte of data from IINet in Australia. Wow, uh, 500 gig on peak, 500 gig off peak, Holy and God. and I would just that's unlimited. I wouldn't, you know, that, there would be no problem there. I just I just leave the machine running all the time. Uh, so that is the issue that um, the ISPs here uh, are facing. <laughs> you leave People those. You leave, you leave those torrents going 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> But, you know, eventually somebody will find a way to let me pay them and, and I will happily pay for my content. We've had this discussion as well, you know. Yeah. That's the key to all of this. Yeah. Uh, let me give you money. I want to give you money. Yes. Please let me. Please, please. Uh, but no, no, no. no. So I, I do think the whole Sky debate is, um, uh, is very important, but it's also a little bit of a red herring because mm. uh, the debate is framed up as um, Sky versus other rights holders. Uh, whereas the actual uh, the actuality on the ground is it's rights holders versus customers, uh, so it's a different dichotomy and it's a different model, mm. uh, and nothing that we're talking about is going to solve that because people who want the content will just carry on getting it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this week, this week, um, uh, we were both lucky enough to get our hands on a phablet, Paul. <laughs> phablet is that what we're going to call them? <laughs> Phablets. Uh, and I must say, uh, I was quite impressed. I wasn't prepared to be, but I thought this was uh, a really quite a good compromise between the full iPad size functionality, uh, or even the larger um, uh, tablets that you saw and see come out, and the uh, the phone itself. Yeah. So this is the uh, the um, oh, I'm going to get the name wrong. I know the Samsung uh, Galaxy Note. Yeah. Uh, which is what five point something inches in diameter? Uh, uh, sorry, corner to corner. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's larger yeah. than an iPhone by a long chalk, but it's much smaller than an iPad mm. for those who are uh, Apple fans. And I found it really quite useful. The screen is gorgeous. Mm. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? And you can uh, you can dive in and swim around in there. It's it's a beautiful looking screen. Um, it feels a bit odd when you first look at it and think I can't hold that up to the side of my head. It's like, you know, it's like my, my tape, hello, yeah. hello, you know, it's not going to work. It's, it's just ridiculous. But um, uh, it, it's, uh, it actually worked quite well in practice. And um, uh, Chris Keel from NBR has tweeted out a photo of me using one, and it just looks like a phone. You wouldn't know yeah. any different. It's true. So, so that was quite good. Um, but the interesting thing I found was the stylus. Mm. Uh, back to the future. Yeah. I can't think what year it was, 1999, my Palm 5 had a, had a stylus. Uh, and um, was incredibly useful for that. But um, uh, this, this, they've, they've long since faded into memory, and now they're making a comeback. And uh, watching um, uh, an artist drawing a picture on the screen of this thing, mm. the screen technology has come on so far that he was able to do an awful lot with it, uh, far more than I would be uh, expecting from a, a touch screen. It was incredibly sensitive, so that's, the stylus worked really well. So it sounds like it's, a, it's, it's one of those um, devices yet again that could be great for business, but for play as as well. Um, yeah, you, know, you could imagine architects using these kinds of things, I suppose. Well, that's that's right. And you know, I've downloaded an app for my uh, my iPad that um, allows me to draw on the screen. But I use my fat pudgy finger, and it, it's just like you know crayons. Mm. Uh, so I can write notes to myself, or I can I can draw on the screen and and you know annotate things. Uh, but with with a stylus and with a, a much more refined um, digitizer, which is the thing that sits in behind the screen and, and translates where you're touching into uh, whatever it is you're trying to write, yeah. uh, it worked, worked incredibly well, and uh, and I was quite impressed with the results. Um, uh, plus, it's running on Android, of course, uh, and uh, you've got all of the App Store and everything else that goes on there. So uh, there's a, there's an awful lot. Um, I've pixelated again. Look at that. I'm, are, I'm eight bit. Are you are you happy with your um, caricature? 
Uh, it didn't look much like me, but as the chap said, you know, he was very tired and he was apologising before he started. But I was just impressed with the ability for him to, to draw anything at all uh, on this screen. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's definitely uh, a man wearing glasses and uh, it could well be me. <laughs> uh, I'll probably pick out my passport photo for it any time. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Paul Brislin has been looking at ultra-fast broadband for us and, um, and the Samsung Galaxy Note. You can continue the conversation with him on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Paul Brislin, uh, and we'll see him next week as well in eight-week okay. form. See ya.